Welcome. Um, let's prepare our hearts uh, to praise God and receive his word. Well, church, gather around, because we've got us a problem. There's a lot of inspiration floating around these days. Words that paint a pretty picture, but you won't find them in the scripture. That's because they're all from the book of second opinions. Well, they'll say, follow your heart where it leads you. Just let that little voice inside you show the way. I guess the million dollar question, is that your heart or indigestion? Cause the heart's been known to lead a fool astray. It ain't hard to get hooked on the book of second opinions. We'd rather live our own truths, don't tell us what to do, just what we want to hear. But it's high time we turned our interest to God's word instead of Pinterest. And finally close the book of second opinions. Well, they say everything happens for a reason. Just to give our foolish ways a clever spin. And I heard them say the Lord won't give you anything you can't handle. But the truth is we can't handle anything without him. It ain't hard to get hooked on the book of second opinions. We'd rather live our own truth. Don't tell us what to do, just what we want to hear. But it's high time we turn our interest to God's word instead of Pinterest. And finally close the book of second opinions. You say I don't have to change. Cause it's just the way I am I've got all the proof I need Right here in my Enneagram I can tell myself it's always been about me it Give me self-love and positivity But all the good vibes in the world Will never make a dead heart beat Well, the world might tell you All roads lead to heaven and well, to that, there's just one thing I'd like to say. There's one throne, and I'm not on it. A solid rock, and I'll stand upon it. Jesus is the truth, the life, the way. It ain't hard to get hooked on the book of second opinions. We'd rather live our own truth. Don't tell us what to do, just what we want to hear. But it's high time we turn our interest to God's word instead of Pinterest. We finally close the book of second opinions. And it's high time we turn our interest to God's word instead of Pinterest. And finally close the book of second opinions. little humor and levity starting off the service today. <laughs> Unfortunately, truer than we might like to admit. Anyhow, good job. Welcome to church today, y'all. The announcements just, we've done a good job of putting them up there on the screen, but just to kind of add emphasis to the prayer workshop that's coming up on the 30th, uh, the last Sunday of the month. So please, if you can, come to that. The loops or the chains you see here, each one of these represents a good deed done by the children that attended VBS. So the chain grew and grew and grew as each day went by, as the kids were through the teaching and the scripture and incentivized, if that's, I pardon all English teachers here, um, to go out and apply what they were learning each night in VBS and, and then to come in and, and let us know about it. And so this, this chain grew and grew and grew. So that's kind of the, 
If you want to see the actual fruits of VBS, it's right here in this uh, manifestation, in this uh, display of that. We are after the, or as part of our opening prayer today, we're going to be praying for the mission team that's going out to Costa Rica. And is there anything else we need to make the folks aware of here? Oh, and yes, coming up on that same Sunday, so the same Sunday as the prayer workshop, it's, we're gonna, it's the fifth Sunday, it's Puzzle the Pastor, it's one service, you'll actually get to meet people you haven't met in months, and yet they're members of your own church. It was interesting when um, Dudley was singing the other day, Dudley's an eight o'clocker, and he said, I've seen some people I haven't seen in years by just coming to all three services. So that was, that was quite good. So that one service is, and that's the purpose of our, I think it's only four times a year there's a fifth Sunday. The reason we do that is so this body in Christ can actually realize who else is in the body. In case you didn't know, bachelor's corollary to the one service is the one thing you cannot say at that service is, oh, I haven't seen you before. Don't say that. Don't, don't make people who are members of the family feel like they're a stranger. Anything else? Potluck. Well, yes, of course. Bring some chow. Yeah. And that's the, uh, um, you know, don't. I did see in the papers, Tracy here today? Tracy King? Not here today? Okay. I saw in the paper where he has announced he's not going to re run for re-election. So maybe we can finally send him to HEB on those fifth Sundays. If you didn't know, we sent him to HEB one time on, on for the potluck to get something. Well, I shouldn't say we. It was his wife. Um, and that's a mistake because Tracy King doesn't go to HEB normally because everybody says, oh, Representative King. And then they buttonholed him. So by the time he got back, we didn't need that food anymore. So pretty soon we'll be able to send him to HEB because uh, he's going to retire from politics. In the meantime, we won't send him on the 30th. Okay, let's pray. Lord, thank you that we can gather today in your house, worship you. We lift up to you our mission team. So grateful that they're willing to go and that we're able to send them. We do pray for whatever work you're going to do in Costa Rica through them, for VBS and for the building. Keep them safe. Protect them from malaria and, and the other tropical things. Let them be instruments and messengers of the love of this congregation for Costa Rica and for the greater world that truly the gospel goes forward. Lord, for these other concerns that are on our heart today, we place them on the altar. We ask for your intervention. We also, Lord, we give you this time, that this too, this offering, choosing to be here instead of the many other things that are calling for our attention. We purpose to be here in your house today, Lord. May it be a sweet fragrance to you. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If you are able, please let's stand the hymn 364, Because He Lives.
Let's affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Would the ushers please come forward? Let us pray. Lord, we love you. Out of love, we give these gifts back to you. Out of faith, we give these gifts back to you. Lord, we ask that they go from this house and accomplish that for which you've purposed. Your word doesn't return void. These gifts will not return void. They will truly go and advance your kingdom. We believe this, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that the Lamb could rescue the souls of man? Oh, you rescue the souls of him. Counselor, Comforter, Keeper, Spirit we long to embrace. You offer hope when our hearts have hopelessly lost our way. Oh, we've hopelessly lost the way. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. Almighty, infinite Father, faithfully loving your own, here in our weakness you find us falling before your throne. Oh, we're falling before your throne. You Oh, wait. 
always hunger for. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace. Our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger Please be seated. Now it's young disciples' time. Good morning. Who do you think, on everybody up here, out of you kids, who is the tallest? You are, Jeremy? I don't know. Let's see. Can you all stand up? Let's see who the tallest person is. Ooh. Wait, let's hear Peyton get here by Addie. Let's see. Okay. Oh, it's so close. What do you all think? Who is it? It's a tie. It's a tie. Okay. All right. You, so you three come stand right here. Stand beside me right here. Now, out of the rest of you, who's the shortest? Come here, Adia. Come here. Let's see who's the shortest. Come here, Jeremy. I think it's Adia. Okay. So you guys sit down. Adia, you come sit over here. Or stand over here by me real quick. No, stand, stand, stand. Okay. Oh, she'll. All right, so do you think that y'all are done growing? Will you get taller? Will you get taller? Yes? Yes. You think so? Oh, that's good. Okay. All right, you don't think you're going to stay this size forever? No? No? Oh, good. Okay, all right, y'all can sit down. Well, right, none of you are done growing, right? All of you are going to get taller. But I'm going to tell you about a man who was short. He was an adult, and he'd stopped growing already, and he was small. So I'm going to read this to you. It's about Zacchaeus. See him there in the tree? And there's Jesus. It says, The streets of Jericho were, were lined with people eager to catch a glimpse of Jesus. Among them was a tax collector called Zacchaeus. Everyone hated tax collectors and believed that they stole some of the taxes to line their pockets, stole some money. So no one would make a way for Zacchaeus, and he was too short to see over the crowd. He was feeling frustrated. Then he had a great idea. He would climb a tree. And from its branches, he could see the procession with Jesus as it made its way toward him. He almost fell off the branch when Jesus stopped. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down. I must stay at your house today. And he scrambled down and he bowed before Jesus as the crowd muttered angrily about Jesus visiting with a sinner. 
a tax collector. But Zacchaeus was already a changed man. He said to Jesus, Lord, I'm going to give you half of everything I have. I'm going to give it to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay them back four times the amount. Then Jesus turned to the crowd and said, it is, it is lost people like Zacchaeus who I have come to save. And today he has found salvation. So even though Zacchaeus was short and he had stopped growing in height, he began to change when he followed Jesus. He grew in another way. He grew in love and he grew in compassion for others. Now, some of us, when we get older, we think we're done changing, we're done growing. But with Jesus in our hearts, and when we are guided by him and his love, we can grow and change even when we're old. Like Zacchaeus, we want to right all the wrongs we've done and help others who are in need. We want to tell others how wonderful Jesus is. So we might not grow bigger and taller, but with Jesus, we can grow in love. Now let's pray. You all repeat after me, okay? Dear Jesus, change us. Don't let us stay the same. We want to grow. To love you and to love others more and more. In your name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand as you are able for today's scripture reading? Our first verse is from Psalm 71, verses 6 through 12. From birth I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. I have become a sign to many. You are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise declaring your splendor all day long. Do not cast me away when I am old. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone. For my enemies speak against me. Those who wait to kill me conspire together. They say, God has forsaken him. Pursue him and seize him, for no one will rescue him. Do not be far away from me, my God. Come quickly. God to help me. And then from John 21, verses 17 through 19. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, Follow me. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I already know that Sharon Pope knows the answer to this question. I found out in second service. 
I'll find out if you guys are going to do better than first service. Can you finish this phrase? Old age and treachery. Oh, man, I'm not doing good. Sharon, you and I, we're weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, and old and treacherous. Okay. So it's old age and treachery defeat youth and strength every time. That's how the whole saying goes. You say, hmm, maybe why do they know that saying? <laughs> it's, it's, it's troubling that my pastor knows that. It's part of the reason that I brought up this message. We sometimes find out in life that people who've been around the block a time or two may know something that those of us who haven't been, well, it's not around the block, it's laps around the sun, right? Yeah, that's, that's old age. How many laps around the sun you've done? The fact that you're here in a Methodist church, I, and, and I guess I should give a disclaimer that if you're not a baby boomer, if you're a Gen Z or a millennial, you may not need this message right now. You will need it later, though. And chances are, you know someone who's a boomer. Your grandma's a boomer. Your parents are boomers. Someone you know is old. They need this message. So although you might be tempted to fall asleep and say, it doesn't apply to me, it does. It does. You can bring it to somebody else. But the fact that you're a Methodist means you're probably a boomer. Those are the demographics of being a Methodist. We have more boomers than any other group in our church. Boomers are those who were born before 1964. Well, World War II to 64, some of you were born before World War II. You really need this message. <laughs> Al. Um, but uh, <laughs> the... My poor kids, if, if, you know, if you wonder why we have to pray for my son all the time, I raised him with the motto, if you fight fair, you get hurt. I'm a former prison guard, and people thought, I'd, you know, they used to say to me, I bet you've been in a lot of fights, and I said, I have, but none of them have been fair, because if you fight fair, you get hurt. So that's kind of old age and treachery. I, I learned that, that sometimes, I learned it as a young man, that when I fought old men, they frequently beat me, because they knew how to cheat. Now this, but hopefully before I end this message, you will figure that I'm not advocating cheating. But I am advocating that sometimes as old people, we do cheat because we know how to work the system more than those who've done fewer laps around the sun. They haven't learned to cheat yet. This was an interesting psalm to look at, Psalm 71, because it appeared that this was a young person writing this. Someone who went to VBS, that's what the first few verses said. I have depended on you, Lord, since I was a child. I've, since my mother's breast, I have been there in church, going to VBS, going to Sunday school, doing all of this stuff. I have become a sign for many. Don't forget that, the sign for many. It may not be our case here at first, or well, we're not first anymore. We're you Valley Methodist. Maybe our case here that the children who come are brought by their parents, but I can tell you that in other parts, maybe outside the Bible Belt, the people who bring children to church are the senior citizens, are the old people. And therefore, if the if what's said in church, what's taught in VBS is to believe, to be believed, it must be lived by those grandparents who brought the kids. They have become a sign to their family, to the kids they bring to VBS, to the kids that were there. I'm just using VBS as, because it's so recent, but in every example where we try to convince children that the Christian faith is valid, is true, it's the signs that they know, the people that they live, and more and more in America, those signs are senior citizens. So where do we, as the psalmist said in this psalm, where do we fear that in our old age, God will abandon us, will cast us out? 
Is that scriptural? No. Scripture is the very opposite. The Bible is full of instances where it's old people that God used. Genesis 21, Abraham, the one that the three major world faiths claim, Abraham, he didn't, he didn't get to the major leagues until he was 100 years old. And when he was 100 years old, he had his first child, the first one that God was going to place his inheritance on. That's when Isaac was born. He was 100 years old. In Romans 4, when Romans 4 recounts that for us in the New Testament, you know, reaching back and making that foundation to the earlier covenant, he said, Abraham, when his body was as good as dead, basically when he had no strength, there was no expectation that he could expect a future, that is the moment where God made his everlasting covenant or made him through Isaac and you know that all mankind would be blessed through him we know that I mentioned last week in the sermon on widows that at Jesus' birth there's this widow she's been a widow for 84 years and she's there God keeps using old people again and again in Psalm 92 we have the promise as people of faith that in our old age, we will bear fruit. And in Isaiah 46, it says, I will take care of you when you are old. So we have a God who specifically speaks to us. Is the human instrument of Psalm 71 some kind of aberration? Do we have to say, well, that was just a one-off, that we can ignore that? I want to say as a pastor, I have seen the very thing that is happening in Psalm 71 happen way too many times in church. That someone who grew up in church, that when they were strong, and, and can we admit it's easier... <laughs> To follow God when you're strong, or it seems counterintuitive, right? But you all listen to country western? Is there not a song right now that says, I only pray when I need a favor? You heard that song? I only pray when I haven't got a prayer. So this is when you're stronger and younger, you're Actually, it's, it's easier to ignore God, but that's not what this person did. When they were younger and stronger, they were walking with God, and then they're worried that in their old age, God will abandon them. And I have seen Methodists, I dare say it, Methodists, that in their old age, they, in some of their behaviors, they behaved as if God was no longer God over their life. What am I talking about? Well, two areas that I'll just use for this sermon, but I hope that you realize it's not confined to just these two areas. Finances and health. I'll do the easy one first. Let's do health. You'll say, well, I would never betray God and show a lack of faith about health. Well, then I would say to you, maybe you might not, but in COVID, I saw a lot of Christians that were in church do some things that were sketchy. Some, even in my own family, people that, I, that took me to church were convinced they would, that COVID would kill them unless they got the shot and the zip code was wrong. They didn't live in the zip code to get the shot. But they learned it was being given over in that zip code, and they fudged. I didn't say lie, right? Because then I'd be calling my mom a liar. But they fudged their admittance to that zip code so they could get the shot. Now, you know, six weeks later, it was going to be given in this zip code over here anyhow. And we won't even talk about whether you needed that or not, but that's a whole other story. But here was someone 
who had become a sign for their generation, and yet everyone in their life knew, you've already got the shot? You must have gone up to Austin to get it. You must have gone here where they were giving it because they weren't giving it in this zip code on this day. If you've already had it, you had to fudge. You became convinced that God would cast you aside when you were old, that he would forsake you when you did not have power, and you dealt with this crisis. Maybe that's not you. Maybe you didn't change zip codes or fudge zip codes to get the shot but look and see if there is some other healthcare thing. Are you trusting in some magic promised potion from the internet that is going to somehow restore something to you that you haven't asked God for? That you're trusting in something of this planet instead of something, someone in heaven because you're worried that in your old age God will cast you aside. But it kind of segues into another thing that we do a lot in Methodist churches. Maybe not this Methodist church. But I've pastored a lot of churches in the years that I've been senior pastor. One of the most common signs that we don't trust God to provide for our finances in old age is usually, it starts with a relationship. That we're, you know, and I say we're, but it's, that's the royal we in the sense that many Methodists that I've met that go to church would not, you know, who wouldn't imagine not being in church on a Sunday are in a relationship after they've, after they've been widowed or become a widower in some way. They're in a relationship that were they to actually marry, they would lose a pension or they would lose a social security check and, and I wish, you know, if you want to get riled up about something, we need to get our politicians to make it so that you, when you honor God by actually getting married after your whatever marriage or relationship that allowed you to get that pension, you don't lose it when you honor God and get legal. But the truth is, currently in the system, when you get legal sometimes, you lose your social security. You lose a pension. Remember, that's what the test was for Abraham in Genesis 21. He finally had social security, Isaac. And God said to him, do you trust me? Go sacrifice your son, Isaac. So he had, he was put on the, the right on the crux to say, he's a hundred years old. His chances of having a second shot are not great. And God says, this child that is going to be your, take care of you in your old age, you've got to go put him on a stack of wood. And Abraham believes God, and because of that, we get all the promises. We are children of Abraham today. But that still comes into the church, and we say, God, did you know that if I honor you, I'm in love, or really, you know, this relationship is real but if I actually go before a judge or come before the pastor and make it legit, I lose my pension. God, I don't want to be cast away in my old age. I don't want to be forsaken. And God's word is, that's not what happens. If you honor God, I will honor you. Did not we teach the children in VBS, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness? And his righteousness, we sometimes don't... And all of these things shall be added unto you if we would just honor God in our old age and say, Lord, the system is rigged so that we, if we honor you, we lose. And God's like, no one ever loses when they honor me. I want to give you an incentive to, to honor God, to say, actually, in your old age, by your very weakness... You can actually do more for the kingdom than you could when you were young and strong. Some of you may know I have a brother-in-law who played 11 years for Miami. And many of those years, he led the NFL in interceptions. No one was as good at intercepting passes as Don McNeil. He was also uh, the Christian Fellowship or 
Fellowship of Christian Athletes. He went to inner city schools and talked about how transformative Jesus was in his life. But the reaction in many of those inner city schools was, great for you, Don McNeil, no wonder you love Jesus, but look what he's done for you. You played 11 years for the Miami Dolphins, went to three Super Bowls, although I might say one year he did lose the Super Bowl. His picture was on every newspaper in America for losing that Super Bowl. But still he was there. And so his witness wasn't as powerful to these inner city kids because they're like, Shh, I could, I'd love Jesus too if I wasn't born here. But now that he has multiple sclerosis and has had it for over 20 years and can't even walk anymore, now when he loves Jesus, that, that's unex you know, they, then they don't understand it. How can you love Jesus when you had everything and now you, you can't even walk? Well, that's when people listen to you. In your old age, when you're feeble. Let's go look at the scripture again. John 21, that's why that scripture's there today for us to, again, if you're young, you're not, you're not yet at this stage. But look what Jesus says to Peter, because Peter, at this point, John 21, is at the top of his game. He's only been three years since he was working every day as a commercial fisherman. Is that hard work, Al? Pretty physical to do commercial fishing. Even back then, even more physical. So I'm willing to bet that old Peter could win an arm wrestling tournament against most people in John 21. And yet, at the most crucial moment of his life, when he was the fittest, when he was the strongest, when he thought he was the cockiest, he denied Jesus. And he let Jesus down. And that's why in John 21, Jesus says to him the third time, do you love me? Because he needed to be restored. He needed to prove that he wasn't a coward. And so then Jesus tells him, don't worry. When you are old, you know, when now you're young and fit, you can go where you like. See how far that got you. It didn't get Peter very far. The most crucial decision of his life, he lets Jesus down. He said, but when you get old, you will put out your hands, and for me, that image is of a guy, you know, guy you're arresting, putting his hands out, and you're putting the cuffs on him. He says, when you're old, you put out your hands, and then others will dress you. You're pretty dang helpless when you can't put on your own clothes. For some of us, that's already started, right? Have your shoes have Velcro now instead of laces? <laughs> I knew we'd get a laugh at that one. Or maybe you do nothing but slip-ons now, and... and um, why do I always have trouble remember Crocs. Maybe you wear nothing but Crocs, but for Travis, he's already there. <laughs> but, <laughs> so he better not get much older. But, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, there comes a stage where you can't even sometimes reach down and touch your shoes. But this is what's, you know, Peter is predict, oh, sorry, Jesus is predicting that for Peter. The time is coming where you'll be old and weak and helpless. And then you won't be able to even control where you're going. Your kids will put you in a home. But remember, back, pull in Psalm 71. If you brought these kids to church, you've become a sign for them. And even if they put you in an old folks' home, you're still a sign. And as you age well, as you trust God, as you show you're not afraid of God casting you aside in your old age, of forgetting you when you're too weak. You're still there. You're still witnessing. You are still a sign. And as we live our faith in health care, in our finances, when we honor God first, that, you know, the last verse there of John 21 is, that is how you're going to glorify God Peter's thing is he's going to get martyred. He's going to get killed for his faith. And for him, that was good news because he knew he'd been a coward in the Garden of Gethsemane. He'd been a coward at the high priest's house. So it's so restorative to say, you mean when I'm at my weakest? I was at my strongest and I failed you. I'm going to be at my weakest and I'm going to glorify you. And you and I, if we get so blessed, we're going to get weak. We're going to get old. And actually, that's a mercy because our children might not want to let us go. So, you know, I wish, I, I think we all wish we could go out like Caleb that was as strong as 80 as he was when he was 40. But that 
I'm not saying that you're going to go out like Caleb. I'm going to say there will be this weakness that I just described, where you're going to be Mr. Velcro or whatever it is, Miss Velcro. But the point is, as you then stand for the things that matter, things that are important to God, you can actually do, you are VBS. You are VBS every living day of your life as you show that your God will never cast you aside, no matter how old, no matter how weak, no matter how overlooked by the world. It's not old age and treachery. It's old age and fidelity. And that's what God calls us to. Let us pray. So Lord, thank you. <laughs> and we say with great reluctance, thank you for letting us get old. But we also are reminded many of our peers never got that privilege of age. But you're going to grant it to us and may we use it as the gift that it is, a chance to show that we love you. Thank you, Lord. May we be old and faithful until you come for your children. We ask this in your mighty name. Amen. Please let's send to sing hymn uh, 352, It's Me, It's Me, O Lord. Please be seated. We're going to know these, so if you want to sing with us, please feel free to. We would love that. We really would. What a fellowship, what a joy divine Leaning on the everlasting arms What a blessedness, what a peace is mine Leaning on the everlasting arms Leaning, leaning Safe and secure from all alarms Leaning, leaning, leaning Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring 
Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, I cannot fall. Listen every moment to my Savior's call. Listen in the Savior as my all in all. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the presence. Precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the And hear now the benediction. There is power in the blood, the blood of the Lamb. If you've accepted Jesus, that blood covers you. You have that power, that wonder-working power. Leave his house this day convinced that he purposed you for this day, for this week, for this ministry in your family and in the places that he sends you. All to his glory. Power in the blood. It is yours. In the mighty name of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.